Chapters 30 through 34 of the Book of Deuteronomy from the Holy Bible in Modern English. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Mark Penfold. The Holy Bible in Modern English, translated by Ferrar Fenton. The Book of Deuteronomy, chapters 30 through 34. Chapter 30 consequently when these events come upon you the blessings and the cursings which i have put before you and you cause your heart to turn back in every nation where your ever-living god has scattered you and you return to your ever-living god and listen to his voice in all that i have commanded you to-day you and your children with all your heart and with all your soul and return to your ever-living god your rest and your comfort then the ever-living your god will come again and collect you from every people where he had scattered you if you have been drawn to the limits of the sky your ever-living god will collect you from there the ever-living your god will take you and bring you to the country your fathers possessed and you shall possess it and will cause you to prosper and increase more than your fathers and the ever-living god will mould your hearts and the hearts of your posterity to love your ever-living god with all your soul so that you may live and the ever-living will put all those afflictions upon your enemies and on those who hated and persecuted you when you repent and listen to the voice of the ever-living and practice all his commands which i command you to-day your ever-living god also will cause you to excel in every work of your hand in the fruit of your body in the produce of your cattle in the beautiful produce of your farms for the ever-living will come to rejoice over you in delight as he rejoiced over your fathers because you listened to the voice of your ever-living god to preserve his commandments and institutions which are written in this record of the law when you return to the ever-living your god with all your heart and with all your soul for these laws which i command you to-day will never depart or go far from you they are not in the heavens that you should say who can go up for us to the heavens and bring them to us that we may listen to and practice them nor are they across the sea that you should say who can cross over for us and bring them to us that we may hear and practice them for the matter is very close to you in your mouth and in your heart to practice look i put before you to-day life and prosperity and sin and death what i propose to you is life to love the ever-living your god to walk in his ways to preserve his legislation and institutions and decrees when your ever-living god will increase you and bless you in the land which you are going to possess but if your heart revolts and you will not listen but degrade yourselves and worship vile gods and serve them i announce to you to-day that perishing you shall perish your time shall not be long on the ground which you are passing the jordan to go and possess bear witness to me now heavens and earth i place life and death before you the blessing and the curse therefore choose for yourselves the life that you and your posterity may live love your ever-living god listen to his voice and hold to him for he will give you life and extend your time to rest upon the land that the ever-living promised to your fathers to abraham to isaac and to jacob to give them chapter thirty one then moses proceeded to conclude his speeches to all israel and said to them i am the son of a hundred and twenty years to-day i am no longer able to go out far or to come back and the ever-living has said to me you shall not pass over this jordan the ever-living your god himself will pass over before you he will destroy those heathens from before you and drive them out the saviour himself will pass over before you as the ever-living has said and the ever-living will do to them as he did to sihon and to og kings of the amorites and to their country which you destroyed the ever-living will thus deliver them to your face and you shall do to them exactly as you were commanded take courage be strong fear not tremble not before them for your ever-living god himself marches with you he will not forsake or desert you 
Moses then called to Joshua and said to him in the sight of all Israel, Be strong and bold, for you shall bring this people to the land which the ever-living promised to Abraham to give to them, and you must divide it amongst them, and the ever-living himself will march before you, he will be with you, he will not forsake or abandon you. Fear not, shrink not. Moses afterwards engraved this law, and gave it to the priests, the sons of Levi, who carried the ark of the covenant of the ever-living, and to all the judges of Israel. Moses also ordered them, saying, At the end of every seven years, at the year of release, and at the feast of tabernacles, when all Israel goes to see the presence of your ever-living God in the place which he chooses, you shall read this law to all Israel in their hearing at a public meeting of the people, of the men, the women, the children, and the foreigners who are in your villages, so that they may hear, and learn, and fear the ever-living your God, and take care to practice all the commands of this law, and that their children who know it not may hear and learn to fear the ever-living your God, all the time of their life upon the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess. The ever-living afterwards said to Moses, Now that your days approach death, summon Joshua and station him in the hall of assembly, and I will instruct him. Moses and Joshua therefore went and stationed themselves in the hall of assembly, and the ever-living appeared in the hall of assembly in a pillar of cloud, and the pillar of cloud stood at the opening of the hall, and the ever-living said to Moses, You are now to sleep with your fathers. When this people will arise and whore after the foreign gods of the country where they are going to reside, and they will revolt from me and break the covenant that I made with them but my anger will burn against them at that time, and I will turn from them and hide my face from them, and they shall meet many miseries and sufferings to devour them, when they will exclaim, Is there no God near me to bring me out from these miseries? But I will hide my presence carefully at that time, because of all the wickedness which they have done when turning after other gods. Therefore now, Write for them this song, and teach the children of Israel to put it into their mouths, so that this song may be a witness for me with the children of Israel. For I will bring them to the land which I promised to their fathers, flowing with milk and honey which they will eat, and be satiated, and fatten, and revolt to vile gods, and serve them, and despise me, and break my covenant. But when these many miseries and distresses and troubles meet them, then this song will be before them as an evidence, for it will not be forgotten from the mouth of their race that I knew today the distress which they would then suffer before they arrived in the country which I had promised. Moses consequently wrote the song on that day and taught it to the children of Israel. Afterwards he instructed Joshua the son of Nun, saying, Be strong and bold, for now the children of Israel are going to the country which I promised to them and I will be with you. When Moses had finished engraving the commands of this law in a record to its end, he commanded the Levites who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, saying, Take this book of the law, and place it inside the Ark of the Covenant of the ever-living your God, and it shall be there as a witness to you that I knew your rebelliousness and your stiff neck, here whilst I lived with you, Today you are murmuring against the ever-living, and will be so after I die. Assemble all your judges, princes, and governors to me, and I will recite in their hearing these words, and I will call as witnesses to them, heaven and earth, that I knew that after my death you would corrupt and turn yourselves from the path which I commanded you, and acquire for yourselves misery in the future, for you will do evil in the eyes of the ever-living, and provoke him by the fabrications of your own hands. Then Moses repeated the words of this song in the hearing of all the assembly of Israel to their end. Chapter 32 Listen, heaven, and I will speak, and hear my utterance, earth. My teaching shall drop like rain, my utterance spread like dew like showers upon the herbage, and like sprinklings on the grass. For I proclaim Jehovah's name, I exalt our glorious God, 
whose fort is a perfect refuge for all his lines are straight a god of truth and not unjust righteous and upright he corrupt you have not his son's form you wayward and fickle race repay not thus to the lord you stupid and unwise clan is he not your forming father who made and constructed you remember the times everlasting reflect on the ages of years ask your father who will inform you your elders and they will relate how the highest allotted the races when he divided the sons of man fixing the bounds of the nations with a place for israel's sons for the lord is kind to his people to jacob he measured his share whom he met in a desert country when he strayed in a howling waste he turned him and he directed he watched as the ball of his eye he guarded his nest like an eagle he fluttered over his prey he spread his wings to support him he carried him by their strength he was led by jehovah alone he had no strange god with him he will raise him high in the country he will eat of the fruits of the field and oil from the flinty rock cow's cheese and butter of sheep along with best of the lambs and of bashan's rams and goats with the fattest grains of the wheat drank the foaming blood of the grape yet the fat good man will kick you will be fat will be stout and bloated and forsake your maker your god and fall from the rock of his safety and by strangers raise his wrath by depravities raise disgust and godless worship demons gods that you never knew fresh from abroad imported whom your fathers never feared and neglect the power that made you and forget your god in your lust but the lord will see and will sorrow be sad for his daughters and sons say my face i will veil from them i will see what it is they pursue for they are a race that is faithless they never will build on the truth they provoke me with fictile gods they insult with the idols they make so i vex by an unknown people by a nation unthought i provoke then a fire shall go from my presence and burn down to the pit below and consume the land and its produce and igniting the base of the hills it shall rush to their top with a roar i will feed my arrows upon them mad with famine and fever's rage as a bitter force of destruction i will send fierce beasts upon them with the venomous snakes of the dust without the sword shall devour and terrors invade their homes alike on the youth and the maiden the suckling child and the gray beard i declare i would blow them away i would blot from the memory of man unless on account of their foemen lest their oppressors should see and say our own hand has conquered but did not jehovah do it for the race was bereft of its senses and had no understanding left i would they were wise to reflection that they understood its results then one should chase a thousand and two could repulse a host except for the power who sold them and the lord who delivered them up for their rock is not like our rock our foes being judges themselves for their vine is a true stock of sodom from gomorrah's blasted farm its bunches are bunches of poisons bitter clusters of grapes it yields their wine is the venom of serpents and the poison of deadly asps is it not stored up beside me and well sealed up in my barns a means of avenge and requital when the time of their punishment comes when their day of distress approaches its agents are ready prepared then the lord will redress his people for his servants he deeply grieves when he sees their power departing and fail and fade and decay then he asks where now are their godlings the powers upon whom they trust who ate the fat of their offerings and drank up the draughts of their wine can they now arise and help you can they now be your hope look i only myself am that and there is no god but me i am the truth and the life i wound and i can restore and none can tear from my hand 
so i lift up my hand to the heavens and declare as for ever i live i will flash my sword as the lightning and justice stands on my right i will put distress upon tyrants and repayment upon my foes my darts will be drunk with their blood and my sword will devour their flesh drink the blood of the slain and captives and the chiefs who lead on my toes you heathen rejoice with his people for he raises the blood of his saints and upon their oppressors does justice and the land of his people protects moses came forward and recited all the words of this song in the hearing of the people and of hoshea the son of nun when moses had finished reciting all these verses to israel he said to them fix upon your hearts all the ideas which i have commanded to you and to your children from the first until to-day and take care to practice the whole of the purport of this legislation for i have not merely spoken myself to you but he who is your life has spoken it to extend your times upon the land which you pass over the jordan to possess the ever-living afterwards spoke to moses on that very day saying go up the hill by the ford to mount nebo and survey the land of canaan which i will give to the children of israel for possession and you shall die upon the mountain that you ascend and be added to your people as aaron your brother died on the hill of hills and was added to his people because you did not exalt me among the children of israel at meribah of kadesh in the desert of sin where you did not sanctify my presence among the children of israel therefore you shall survey the country near it but you shall not enter the country which i will give to the sons of israel chapter thirty three and having been thus spoken to moses the man of god blessed the sons of israel before his death and said the lord came down from sinai and on them shone from the tempest he blazed from paran's hill and brought ten thousand saints his flaming right hand ruled for love of his sacred tribes on your hand let them trust at your word rise and march let moses give them laws as prince of jacob's host and be yeshurun's leader controlling the nation's chiefs uniting israel's tribes let reuben live not die and let his number be great he then said to judah let the lord hear judah's voice and his hand go out with his men as a power and help from his foes and then to levi he said you have the sweetness and light you are with the one with a trust for at massa you showed your truth and fought at the waters of strife who said to his father and mother i have no reverence for you and as brother he recognized none and had no regard for his son when he was the guard of your truth and stood in defense of your bond let them teach jacob decrees and in israel settle your laws and offer the incense to you on your altar presenting the gifts bless lord their power and work and break through the strength of their foes and their enemies when they arise he said to benjamin the beloved of the lord rests secure relying on him all the day and born safe up in his arms then to joseph he said may the lord give bliss to his land by the gifts of the skies and the dews and with fountains bubbling below and the bounties produced by the sun and the gifts that increase with the moon and gifts from the hills of the east and the wealth of the ancient hills and the gifts that burst from the ground and delights of the shadowing palms come all upon joseph's head and crown him his brother's prince like a noble and splendid prince his horns are the horns of a bull with them he will conquer nations and unite the land into one for the ten thousands of ephraim and manasseh's thousands are his then he said to zebulon zebulon be glad in your ports and issachar in your halls they are called the men of the hills where they feast in a noble feast for they suck of the wide-spreading seas and the treasures that hide in the sand 
Then turning to Gad, he said, Let the horseman Gad be blessed. Like a tiger he crouches down and tears with his arms and jaws. But he thought at the first for himself, so was granted a princely home, and produced the leaders of men, who did the work of the Lord, and first led my people right. Then he exclaimed to Dan, Dan is the whelp of a lion who leaps up out of Bashan. Then he said to Naphtali, Naphtali loves to take rest and be filled with the gifts of the Lord. He possesses the tides of the sea. Then as to Asher said, Let Asher be blessed with his sons. By his brothers let him be loved and dabble his footsteps in oil. Your bars shall be iron and bronze and your wealth like the tide of the seas. There is none like the God of Yeshurun who rides on the heavens to your aid and floats on the heights of the clouds. His God is above from of old and beneath the eternal arms who sweeps out the foe from your face and gives the command to destroy. Israel dwells alone and secure, Jacob's spring in a land of the corn, and his skies drop dews of wine. Blessed Israel, who is like you? A victor race for Jehovah, your shield, your help, and your sword. You shall grow and subdue your foes, and advance on their hills like a road. Chapter 34 Moses then ascended the hill of Nebo, from the fords of Moab, up to the peak of Pisgah, which is opposite Jericho, and the ever-living showed him all the country. For the ever-living had said to him, This is the country that I promised to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and Jacob, saying, I will give it to your race. Look at it with your eyes, for you shall not pass over it. Moses the servant of the ever-living, consequently died there before Jehovah in the land of Moab, and was buried in a valley in that country behind Beth Peor. Moses was one hundred and twenty years old at his death. His eyes were not weak, and his strength had not gone. The children of Israel, however, wept for Moses at the fords of Moab thirty days, until the time of mourning the loss of Moses was completed. But Joshua the son of Nun was full of spirit and intelligence, for Moses had laid his hands upon him. So the children of Israel listened to him, and he acted as the ever-living had commanded to Moses. The End of Chapters 30-34 through 34, And the End of the Book of Deuteronomy From the Holy Bible in Modern English Translated by Ferrar Fenton Recording by Mark Penfold